Hey, everybody, and welcome to How To Tuesday this week. This week, we're going to go over a subject that is incredibly popular. Uh, because I ended up doing something that I really love for a living, I have a lot of people that ask me how that is possible. How can they do something like that? How can they quit their job and become a professional fisherman? Or how can they quit their job and open a retail shop? Or how do you quit your job and change career paths in any way? Or young people saying, you know what, when I, when I get out of college, I want to do this. Or maybe I don't even want to go to college and I want to be a fishing guide. I want to be a hunting guide. I want to do something that they're passionate about. And you hear so many people giving the advice these days, follow your passion. Well, that is sometimes more difficult than it sounds just to follow your passion and be passionate about something. So I have answered this question a number of times. Uh, one time in written form, which I thought was pretty good, and this this article has uh, been read a lot of times, and it is on our blog, saltwaterexperience.com. The title of it is How to Quit Your Job and Become a Professional Fisherman. And it all started with a, an email question that someone sent me, and it goes like this. Hi, Captains. I love the show. I'm 42 years old. I have a deep passion for fishing. Until recently, I worked 10 years for UM but was never really happy because I wasn't doing what I loved. I'm interested in working on a charter boat. How difficult it is, is it to begin this? Do you have any tips? What's the average salary? Do you know of any captains having openings? Maybe even you guys. Thank you, Robert. And this is how I responded. Robert, I get this question all the time. And when I say this question and all the time, I mean that I get some form of this question at least once per week, and I have since reached the tipping point. The tipping point, and that comes from Malcolm Gladwell's book with the same title, is when things just change and they tip in the direction of success. For me, I reference a tipping point here as the moment when outside, when people in the outside world quit asking me when I was going to get a real job or if I really thought I could make a living fishing and then started me asking me questions like you just did. I guess that if you just continue to do what you love long enough, People just kind of figure out that you're doing okay, or maybe it was the infectious positive attitude or the 14-hour days that I never complained about or that I was always doing 14-hour days for months at a time, and on the one day that I had off, I might have done an 18-hour day for my own enjoyment. Behavior like this is, very, is so contrary to the 9 to 5 punch a clock mentality that is so prevalent in our society. Robert, I promise I'm going to get to your question. Just hang in there. Sometimes I find it a little bit funny that anyone would ask me for advice on how I got started. It is funny because I did virtually everything wrong that can be done wrong and continued to do that until another tipping point happened where people just started assuming that if I had been doing it this way for a long time, then maybe that was the right way. My father was not a professional fisherman or a guide. I did not grow up in the Keys or near the ocean. I did not know anyone who had ever been a professional guide, and I had only taken a couple of guided trips in my lifetime, and those were from guides who were not people that I had any desire to emulate. No, I just started fishing, and I loved it. And when I say that I loved it, I mean it. Fishing became everything to me. When I was fishing, I had complete tunnel vision and laser focus. I was able to learn at a rate that I never knew in school, and for the first time ever, I had a passion, an unrelenting desire to gain as much knowledge and experience as possible in the shortest amount of time. This was new to me. High school was tough for me. I had no idea what I wanted to do and even less of a desire to figure it out. College was probably even worse. However, I did take a risk and applied for a job in Yellowstone National Park for a summer. I got the job. I found myself packing for a summer in a place that I had never been. One thing that made it into the backpack was an eight and a half foot, four piece, six weight Western Series Orvis fly rod. It was cool. I had no idea how to use it. Once there, I found my way to the Yellowstone River and I managed somehow to tie a fly onto a leader. Having no idea what I was doing, I walked down the bank of the river and looked into the water. Floating two feet above the water was the most beautiful fish that I have ever seen. It was a Yellowstone cutthroat trout and it was precisely 19 and a quarter inches long. I stared at the fish and tried to understand how and why it was floating above the water, and then it hit me. Far from the muddy waters of Tennessee, 
I was just beginning to understand the beauty of the Rocky Mountains. The fish wasn't floating above the water. I had just never seen water this clear. It was as if there was no water at all. Confused, I started to put things together, and the bottom, the fish, the surface of the water, and all, all of it began to align correctly, and I realized that the fish was holding in the current about a foot below the surface. Somehow, I managed to get my fly upstream of this fish and watched as he would not eat it because it was dragging unnaturally. I tried for about two hours and until I changed flies, moved, and I was finally able to get the right drift. As Yellowstone cutthroats do, he tilted towards the surface and began to slowly rise towards the fly. This fish knew something wasn't right, and he drifted under the fly for a foot or so before he actually opened his mouth and ate it. Miraculously, I set the hook, and I caught that fish. When I landed the trout, I experienced an inner peace that I have never had before. He slipped out of my hands back into the river, and at that moment, I knew that I would be a fisherman forever. So, Robert, the answer to your question comes now, in sort of a Yoda-type way. Once I decided that I was going to be a fisherman at that moment on the Yellowstone River, I was committed. So committed, in fact, that I probably should have been committed. Nothing was going to stop me. Nothing. Not only was I willing to sleep in a car, scrub toilets, travel, work 18-hour days, make a fool out of myself, ask stupid questions, clean boats, hang around fly shops until they wanted to kick me out, work for free, be a camp cook, wash dishes, build fences, change bearings on trailers, take boatloads of firewood down Class 2 whitewater, fix cars, teach fly casting for free, live in a commune with, other, with 20 other people, and many, many other things to make it happen. But I did all of those things with a giant smile on my face. I, of course, like you, Asked for advice, and I got plenty, but none that ever really helped. I looked for help to try to make my dream become a reality, and I'm sure that people gave me some great advice and probably some great contacts, but I, they just didn't make sense to me at the time. The fact is that my story of how I was able to become a professional guide is quite the same as others that I know that did it and continue to do it well. You want the secret? Well, here you go. First, Determine what you want. You say you want to work on a char charter boat. Others say they want to be a flats guide, an offshore guide, a tugboat captain, a trout fishing guide, an elk guide, a professional bow hunter, you name it. The method is all the same. Just do it. That's it. Just go out there and do it. If you're not happy with your job, your life, your situation, change it. You want to work on a charter boat? Okay. Go to where there are charter boats. Walk the dock. Talk to the captains and tell them that you want to work for them. They won't hire you? Well, of course they won't. You just showed up. Stick around and take their shit until they do, and you will be tested because they will dish out a lot of shit. Work for free. Clean fish. Scrub toilets. Sleep in your car. Live in your car. One day, someone won't show up and you'll be in. Then, you better work your ass off and make sure that your customers are happy. Make sure that that boat is spotless and then clean it again. Be the best mate that has ever been on that boat, on that dock, in that town, in that state, in the United States. Be the best mate that has ever been in the world. I can't tell you how long this is going to take or if that first dock will be the right place, but if you are committed, it will happen for you. Make your decision and do it. In my opinion, being happy, hungry, and doing what you want is better than being safe fat and unhappy that's my advice take it or leave it all right guys that is how to tuesday this week how to quit your job and be a professional fisherman i don't know that may be good advice take it or leave it it is advice that comes from my own experience and in watching many 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 others make entrance into the professional fishing world and into many other types of 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 opportunities that seem impossible. The fact that you don't know anyone that is doing what you want, the fact that you don't have any contacts, the fact that you don't have any experience, it doesn't matter. What does matter is the commitment to making it happen and then doing all the work that is involved. And you know what? It's going to take longer than you think, and it's going to be harder than you think. But I can promise you this. If you make that commitment, it'll be worth it. So good luck. Send me an email at podcast at Saltwater Experience. Let me know if that is working for you. Let me know if you like this podcast. 
Otherwise, get out there and actually do it. See you.